All right, so this is the wrap up on that SG. Uh, we intonated that bridge, raised up that tailpiece a little bit. It was uh, catching on the back side. I actually padded the pickups, put some foam in there to level just them to up. help them line up a little better with the string path. They were kind of tilting in the opposite direction they should have been tilting. We did raise that tailpiece a little bit. And I mentioned in that Les Paul video, tips to tune your Les Paul, well the same thing applies to this SG. The notch in those saddles needed to be opened up just a little bit. These are 11 to 49 strings, concert pitch. All right, here's a view of that headstock that was snapped and then repaired, sliced, spliced and refinished. Here's another view of the sight of the break and the refinish. So save that serial number and for all intents and purposes you'd never know this thing was ever broken and it will not break again so now that we've actually structurally reinforced the headstock with six glued surfaces three. introduced into this weakest part of the neck three on each spline 100 percent contact the complete floor of each spline and both walls it's so much stronger than the day it was made this is how I set up when I'm putting those machine heads back on. I just have the three corresponding tuners in each corner of the tool crib. Okay, now that is actually a little bit tight. So I'm going to take the reamer, this is a cello reamer, and just very, very lightly, just get the compound and residue out. I'm not reefing these down yet. I just, uh, just kind of finger tight and then actually back them off a little bit so that you're able to pivot and easily get those uh, screws in, into the casting. Yeah, a little bit of obstruction there too, so open that up just a little tiny bit, very gently with that reamer, without chipping anything. This last one on on this side. Again, don't, uh, don't tighten them down at this point. You want them to actually pivot a little bit so you can get those screws in. That one, you see that one too needs to be reamed out just a little bit. We're talking next to nothing here. Just get the uh, compound and residue. Now, that's a good fit. And she's good to go. This last cuff and washer on. I like to keep a block of paraffin wax handy at the bench. And I use it whenever I'm putting screws into wood. I'll just scrape those threads lightly over that paraffin wax. And uh, it just helps the screws kind of slip into place a little better. As you can see, I've got that headstock in the center of my chest, not bending over or reaching over or stretching or hunched over trying to get at the thing. September and October are my months. Yeah, I'd rather it be a little too cool than a little too warm. The leaves changing and blue skies and nice time to go for a walk in the woods. All right, now that we've got all those uh, screws in the casings, we can flip this over and just lower that body platform. Just bring the tack deck down to closed position and now we can just jack it up a little bit there. I still like to have it up to chest level when I'm working. Now we can snug down these cuffs. So my rule of thumb is to use my finger. I just kind of tap that washer with the edge of my fingernail and if it's moving, that's too, it's not tight enough. You really don't want to over tighten these things. It's, they're so easy to strip. You just want them tight enough so that those washers don't uh, jiggle around and that about does it. Alright we slice through that masking tape we'll just spread that back so we get that masking tape off now and expose our adjustment nut. We'll get back to this later we still have to do a complete setup uh, fret dress and a compensated nut on this. I want to take a minute to explain the mechanical function of the nut on a Les Paul or an SG. Now if you look closely you'll see that the it actually protrudes beyond the underside of the fingerboard itself. So this mechanical function and the way this works is when the string tension is put on 
The headstock flexes under string tension and butts up against that back edge of the nut and then that's deflected into the end of the fingerboard. The way you fit the nut on a Gibson guitar could make or break the headstock, literally. You do not want that thing loose. That needs to be a perfect press fit. And this is a mechanical function of the nut that you need to fully understand. So it is imperative that that nut fits in without any looseness or tightness. A good press fit. And all surfaces 100% contact all the way across. This is a big part of the structural integrity of a Gibson headstock. You've got to get a perfect fit. We're ready to use the original nut and trace out the lines like we did on that Jackson guitar. You know, this time of year, when we get a day like this, I set up outside and do my work underneath the tree, just outside the shop door. Just let that dust fly. This is how I set up outside on the tack deck. I have a little pine platter that I put together. It just slips over this flat deck to work, mate. You can see, I've got this kind of hiked up to nose level. Get a really good eye on this as I uh, finish filing those. Uh, slots to the right depth. So I don't bring the strings all the way down. I go across all six strings multiple times and gradually bring them down to the perfect height. So I'm kind of I'm tightening these up. I want to make sure they're taut enough to kind of sit tight in the slots as I kind of lay them out across the... You can see I've got the headstock at the center of my chest, right? And I can lean the file like this and chase it over towards the low E string. So that's what I like about these Hosco files. I can kind of lean them over. This is a real magical time in southwestern Ontario this time of year. October is a wonderful month and we've got great natural light and uh, leaves are just starting to change. It's just so great to be outside working. So when you are filing out the nut slots, you have to make sure that when you exit the back of the nut that the string is pointing towards the inside of the post. So with this guitar, low E string is the cut like this. The A string is cut like this. The D string is cut like that. So you're basically pointing it towards the inside of the post where it's going to end up. You file it on the perfect angle so that each string is directed to its perspective post. And this will reduce your kinking problems with the string catching in the nut slot. This will get rid of it for good. Okay, this is the wrap up on this SG. Here's a F chord. position chords. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. addressed. The compensated nut is done and this guitar is now more stable, more tunable, and more playable than it ever was.